Here's a start to finish breakdown of Golden State forfeiting yet another lead to ruin all the work they'd done up to that point and how they were quite frankly put to bed in the critical moments by a rising Wolves team that had a stretch without their best player in Carl Anthony Towns where they've taken the basketball universe by storm. The Dubs had a turnover prone first quarter but the first half in general saw them crucially keep pace with Minnesota. We'll get to more on the typically lazy passing from Golden State. But on the other side, I've had a Jaden McDaniel segment, which included talk about the Minnesota Timberwolves that's been written for a couple months now. I just haven't found the time to release it, but possibly could in the future. Nevertheless, his ability to lock down the perimeter defensively is something I'm really intrigued with. He only had nine points in this one. McDaniels was a plus seven in his 38 minutes played. He also racked up two blocks and a steal. Nas Reed is insanely underrated. A big man who can take it off the dribble and throw down posters, plus space it out for deep range bombs. That showed itself all throughout, as you'll see in a tad bit. We're still in the breakdown of the first quarter though, and D'Angelo Russell was knocking down threes. Anthony Edwards was all of hitting triples, getting solid dribble penetration, which led to either line drive ravages to the cup or swift ball movement, and getting down defensively on the other end in this opening frame racking up two blocks and a steal within the first few minutes alone. By the way, OG Ananobi of my Raptors is the only guy who has more games with two blocks than the former number one pick this season. Ant's an exceptional help defender with his vamped ability to read defenses, then rack up swatted shots on the backside. I think he can get a bit better as a one-on-one -on -one defender, but his overall defense ended up being one of Wednesday night's major storylines. That said, countering that for Golden State, Draymond was really impactful both with his passing and roll man finishing early on. Threes by Wiggs and Steph stemmed the tide as well. The Warriors made some really dumb passes in that first quarter. Continued laziness like they've displayed simply won't allow Golden State to build up the proper habits for when it matters most for this team in April, May, and June. In the minutes to open the second without Steph, Poole, and Dre in terms of Green's rotations and Jordan's offense worked to keep pace with the Wolves, who countered in the early second queue with buckets from solid bench pieces in Torian Prince and Kyle Anderson. Two guys with length. By the way, Kyle Anderson was a great pickup. I heard some people saying that my Raptors should have picked him up. Great young Wolves team to be excited about, just like the Thunder, who the Warriors faced last time out and we talked about. You can see why Carl Anthony Towns tweeted out that Ant should be an all-star. Having said that, Cat's going to need to adjust his fit within the offense when he gets back because Minnesota's, quite frankly, been a lot better without him. More on that coming up. Again, we're going to get right into the Minnesota standpoint, but in the early second quarter, Kerr executed his substitutions really well. How he kept Curry on for the entire first quarter, then subbed back in Wiggins and Clay with 7.48 left in the second, waiting another minute plus to give Curry a full six minutes of rest, not including timeouts and in-between quarter breaks, of course. You would have assumed that would have saved Curry's legs for later on. In terms of before Steph checked back in during that second queue, I thought DiVincenzo's ability to perform an empty side pick and roll with Kaminga, then step into a pull-up triple, really helped keep pace. Then the offense predictably increased its flowing nature when Curry checked back in, with Wake spinning downhill for a whirling dervish, Dante getting a back cut, and Looney getting free throws off another executed playset. And first half, maybe not daggers, but stabbings from Steph to close out the half, gave Golden State a 9-point lead going into the locker room. Blown leads like this one for Golden State, as I've talked about in previous videos, have happened all year for a Dubs team lacking focus in spurts. Nevertheless, credit to on the other side to Chris Finch for having his guys zoned in completely as D'Angelo Russell would go off for 14 straight points to make it a one-point game. Nas Reed leaked out in transition after one of many Curry misses, all of which erased every bit of work Golden State did throughout the entirety of the game, forcing Steve to call another timeout. Dubs didn't respond though. Shout out Nas Reed for getting three separate go-ahead buckets down the stretch, including the putback dagger. Reed's third go-ahead bucket came on a stone-cold three-pointer from the top of the key. He did brick two triples with the game tied in the fourth, but nevertheless, love the passion, intensity, and evident reps that Nas has been putting in. For the dubs, with their backs completely against the wall, in opposition to what occurred against OKC, the momentum built up by Minnesota was too much to handle, and in lieu of their experience, the dubs just couldn't throw another counterpunch. Overall, they just didn't make enough of those momentum-shifting, timely efforts to protect their lead, efforts in which are required to get a win in every one of the 82 games. 
let alone to establish championship habits as a 15-man group, by the way. Overall, though, based off the elite versatility from Nas Reed, mixing up attacks from either the dunker spot or the perimeter, in addition to how Anthony Edwards is beasting this year, being fourth at his position in defensive rating, playing especially well as of late, posting averages over his last 10 outings of 30 points, 6 boards, 5 dimes, and 2 steals on a 50-45-80 shooting split. Those two factors being Nas and Edwards, among other standouts like slow-mo Kyle Anderson making a blistering 44% of his spot-up threes and shockingly 50% of his pull-up triples, albeit on low volume, are all talking points which say a lot about this Wolves team. Most insanely, based off this continued success without a multiple-time All-Star in Carl Anthony Towns, as talented as Cat is, he may have to reevaluate his place within this Wolves hierarchy once he gets back. Anthony Edwards is ready to be the number one. Congrats on a well-deserved celebration for the state of Minnesota and the city of Minneapolis, an up-and-coming roster with a suffering fan base who for the last decade have experienced an extended yet ultimately successful rebuild in the 2010s. They're now seeing the benefit of patience, albeit in grueling fashion, given it was such a long rebuild. But the T-Wolves earned a fan in me by shocking the dubs, who'd been resembling their championship selves as of late, and as I said, even had their moments in this one. What impresses you the most about this Wolves team who are without cat? Two shoutouts next video from my last upload and this one. Thanks for watching, have a good one.